Yes, indeed. This is the show where we untangle your wired world on RN, on podcast, on SoundCloud, and also on RN TV as well. This is the radio show you can now see and watch and share individual topic discussions. Just all you need to do is head to RN TV. It's on the RN website, and you two can see just how utterly photogenic this week's panel is he is a technology commentator and journalist you can see his work on zdnet and if you do happen to be watching this on youtube you can see his amazing hat as well so Garian, welcome back happy easter mark for people listening on the radio describe what it is that you're wearing right now it's a rabbit on my head <laughs> with a pink nose and did you do this simply because you knew that we were going to start filming download from this week Yes. Okay. Are you Sorry, I, I mean, yes, with all of the news about the Independent Commission Against Corruption this week, I've decided that straightforward, honest answers are the way to go. Mm, mm. Mm. Your bottle of Grange is in the mail. Now, uh, the, uh, joining him, <laughs> next to him, is the editor-at-large for techly.com.au, Claire Porter. Welcome back. I'm hatless, but happy to be here. And it is great to have you here. Now, huge week in the world of information security, which is, of course, your bag, Stilgarian. Uh, last week, we talked about the virulent bug, a uh, heart. Bleed. Well played. It seems we've had our first arrest. Uh, a guy named Stephen Arturo Solis Reyes uh, was arrested. He's a 19 year old. He's arrested uh, for what? What exactly did he do? Well, what he did is he did what many a hacker did as soon as news of Heartbleed broke, uh, which was immediately try to see whether they could do something with this internet vulnerability. And uh, he, amongst many, many people, have succeeded in extracting private data using the heart bleed bug, in his case from the CRA, the Canadian Revenue Agency, i.e. their tax body, uh, and it's appeared to have made off, uh, as part of his proof of concept, some many hundreds of uh, ID numbers of Canadian taxpayers. Yeah, they're looking at about potentially 900, mm -hmm. which is no small number. Claire, do you imagine we're going to see more of these arrests in the next couple of weeks? Um, arrests, maybe? Hackers? Uh, more information being stolen? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Now, we are talking about passwords this week, and there are so many passwords that you need every day. You've got your banking, your phone, your email, and let's be honest, most of us reuse the same passwords over and over and over again, which it turns mm. out is a terrible, terrible thing to do. What you should be doing uh, is using a different strong password on every separate site, which is just not practical unless you use something called a password manager, which is a service that does what, Stilgarian? Keeps hold of all your passwords for you. You see, the great thing about computers is they can remember things for you, including your passwords. So what a password manager does is essentially create one secure vault and it keeps all your passwords in there under military-grade encryption, and you just have to remember one master password to rule them all, as it were. <laughs> so you only have to remember the one, and because you only have to remember one, you can make it a really strong password, or even better these days, a passphrase. Because you know how we used to have that advice that uh, you would make them complex with lots of weird characters and numbers? No, 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 forget that. Make it as long as possible. Is, okay. the, is the advice these days. So pick a phrase from, I don't know, a book, uh, a, a, a memorable conversation, like when you broke up with your first girlfriend, like just make what what she it's said not as me, your it's part. you in category. I in don't love letters. you anymore, dot txt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If it's something that's unique to you and, and that is unlikely to be known by anyone else, that makes a good master password. But, yeah. Use the computer to remember your passwords for you, then you can have them all being nice, random, really long passwords. If you can remember your password yourself, you're doing it wrong. Uh, we are going to walk through all of the different services on offer, but I just want you to kind of paint a picture for me of what it's like to actually use one of these services. Does it pop up automatically? Because I know when you use your browser, it can store your passwords for you and half the time you end up not putting in a new password every time. Is that how it works? It depends on what service you're using, but obviously there are services that almost act like a portal. So you can basically access all of your services is via the actual software. It doesn't look any different. Um, others will just automatically inject that for you every time you go to a site. 
Um, so it depends on which software that you're using. But I think it might be worth adding that while all of this Heartbleed stuff is going on, these programs are excellent and they're great at storing your passwords, but really Heartbleed is a back-end problem. So even if your blockchain or your password storing software has already gone and changed your passwords for you, it may have to do it again because really this is about the SSL certificate. So if Heartbleed and these back-end systems are not communicating properly, it means anyone could go in and get your ID even if you've gone and changed all of your passwords. This isn't a consumer issue. This is a back-end issue. And until Heartbleed gets fixed, nothing is going to help. But where it affects consumers is that even now coming up to the second week into the Heartbleed story, we're still getting major organisations putting their hand up and saying, oh, yeah, we were, we were affected too. We, we fixed it now. So that's the point at which you need to change your password. If you changed your password previously and I still haven't fixed the problem, all you've done is left your new password on the vulnerable service. And, you know, if I want to make a bigger consumer issue of it, it's really that there's been some shoddy work at organisations telling their customers uh, what's going on. And, and this almost feeds directly back into the password manager thing because the password manager I use, uh, and I will name them, they're called 1Password, they move your password vault around your devices from your laptop to your tablet to your smartphone via Dropbox. And Dropbox is one of the organisations that handled this very, very badly. They were vulnerable and they just put up a blog post saying so. I mean, who reads the blogs of all of the services that they do business with? No, that's something Apart go- from tech journalists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, even then there's so many of them. You know, you don't necessarily see that. And... and you know, guys, if something's going wrong, get a message out there fast, particularly so, security. So let's talk about your choices and password managers. Why did you go with that service over, say, LastPass or some of the other ones that are out there? Look, I've been using it for a while and only a year or two ago, the choice was much smaller uh, and it had a good reputation. I tried it. I liked it. And once I've chosen a tool, I'll stay with it and keep using it. Which is why he still has a MySpace page. <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> um, does. See, what you don't see on the radio show is the death stare I got, but if you go to <laughs> RMTV, you can see the death stare. <laughs> no, look, um, uh, seriously, I always, even though I write about this stuff, I stay back from the bleeding edge. With security, that's particularly important. Mm. You don't want to necessarily have the latest and greatest thing because it hasn't been out there long enough for people to find the problems with it and fix them. Um, look, I chose it because it, it had the feature set I needed. Other people say, oh, no, but I really needed to work on Android as a password editor, and 1Password doesn't do that yet. Mm -hmm. You can only read your passwords on Android. And, you know, I'm lazy and didn't change. Fair enough. To borrow one of Stilgarian's favourite phrases, Claire, can you break down for me the different uh, password managers out there, what separates them? What are the different features? I use Apple's keychain. As you can tell, I take it very seriously using the native software of my computers. Um, there's obviously like LastPass. Um, there's heaps and that's the thing. It's kind of like a, a Cambrian explosion of everyone trying to get into this market. Well, the one I find interesting is actually called Dashlane. I'm looking at it here, which will also keep your driver's license, identity cards, bank card details, pretty much anything you want to keep away from yeah, your yeah. I mean, many of these is if they're, if they're keeping your password under military-grade encryption, it's not much extra work for them to say, oh, and upload these photographs of your, you know, your ID and stuff here as well. And that's actually, you know, for people who travel a lot, that can be a very handy feature. You mentioned Keychain being a part of the Apple family. It strikes me that this is one of those services that really should become a function. It should become central to operating systems. Uh, how far into that process are we? Really, I think the very beginning. Uh, as I said, we're seeing an explosion of variety as people try to suss out what the market wants. Pretty much when this is at this stage, it's experimental. And then over the next couple of years, we'll see amalgamations and mergers and acquisitions and people actually maybe even agreeing on standards for this stuff. That'd be nice. <gasps> what other standards? Uh, what are the sort of standards that you would like to see? Employed? You really need um, a standard for how websites present their login information. So a password manager only has to know how to talk in two or three different ways. And that cuts down the testing load. The big problem with keeping 
things secure is that every little aspect has to be tested. So you need to keep it as simple as possible. And at the moment, you know, that, that's still a, an evolving area and people are having arguments about how it should work. If Heartbleed has shown us nothing else, it's highlighted how poorly most mm. companies' back-end systems are protected. So as much as we're going to see a lot of movement in these password storing areas, they're not going to help until businesses really start to take their security and encryption seriously. I mean, the fact is, a lot of the time when you're running a business, you don't want to think about IT and you don't want to think about security. That's why you employ security buffs to do that for you. But unfortunately, it's starting to look as though if there's no general understanding of how information is being stored across the business, it doesn't matter how much money you pay or how smart the people you are that you employ. Until you have a standard across the business where everyone has best practices for storing information and ensuring that customer information is stored properly, no password storing software in the world is going to help you. Absolutely. I agree with all of that, but with more swearing. <laughs> Which, can I just say, thank you for not employing here on the National <laughs> Broadcaster. You are listening to the voices of Stilgarian, a freelance tech commentator. You can see his work in ZDNet Australia and the editor at large for techly.com.au, Claire Porter. Mark Fennell is my name. You are watching or listening to download this show here on RN or RN TV, which is up on YouTube. And you can catch this whole episode just by looking down in the comment section here on RNTV. There should be a link to the podcast, iTunes, the MP3 and the SoundCloud. And thank you for watching another episode of Download This Show here on RNTV. Lexi Sabides, welcome back. Thank you. And the editor of Gizmodo Australia, Luke Hopewell. Hello there. 